Did you know that you can now share your screen with ChatGPT and it can see everything that you could see? Or maybe we didn't realize that ChatGPT can take over your browser and complete any task that you're currently doing on your computer. Well, those two things are absolutely nothing because by the end of this video, you're gonna know about 10 hidden ChatGPT settings that you need to start using today. Now, the first feature that you need to know about is going to be the share screen feature. You can now open up ChatGPT on a mobile device and share your screen with it so it can see everything that you do. Here's how you do it. All you have to do is open up ChatGPT. You are going to click on this right here, and then you're going to see three dots pop up. You're going to click on share screen right here, and you are going to tell it exactly what screen you want to be able to share. And then guess what? ChatGPT is then going to have access onto your screen and can help you with anything or collaborate with you on anything. But that was just hidden feature number one. Hidden feature number two is that you can also go into ChatGPT on your phone and share anything that you could see on your front camera or your back camera. Check this out. All you're gonna do is the same exact thing that we did before. You're gonna click on advanced voice mode right here, but then you are going to click on this camera right here. And as we could see right here, this is then going to pull up all of the different cameras that you can see. This is my front camera right here, and this is my back facing camera. Now I could show ChatGPT anything that I want in order to get it to see. For example, if I wanted to know what kind of watch something was, or what kind of plant something was, or I wanted ChatGPT to have some context, I would be able to do this, and then it could see me. Now as of right now, you can only access those features from your phone, but in the future, you will also be able to do that from the ChatGPT app on your computer, and I am incredibly excited for when they finally begin to release that. Because I'm sure as you can imagine, it's going to be incredibly powerful once we could share everything that we see, everything that we hear with ChatGPT all the time and have it memorize all of that. Now the third hidden feature is that you can control what ChatGPT remembers from your past conversations. You can delete things or you could just have it remember everything. But before I show you how to actually control this, I wanted to remind you that in 2025, more than 51% of companies are already using AI. And companies like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon Amazon, they've already started laying off thousands of people because of AI. And more than 40% of people fear that in the next 12 months, AI is going to take their job. I know it sounds scary, but what you're not seeing is that people that know how to use AI or know how to do their job with AI, those people are actually getting hired right now. And this isn't just about jobs. If you run a freelance business, a regular business, or you do consulting, this is also going to impact you too, because in the future, you're going to need to be AI first and then all the other knowledge that you know. Because here's the deal, AI is an optional, AI is leverage, and those that don't use it are gonna to lose to those that do. So if you wanna stay ahead, you need to start using it today. That's why I strongly recommend joining this two-day AI training, which takes you from a beginner to an advanced AI professional in just 16 hours. It's valued at $895, but I've partnered with OutSkill to provide a thousand seats for free for my audience. Because this is the world's first AI-focused education platform, which is backed by renowned investors and AI founders. And in this two-day program, you're gonna get over 16 hours of live training spread across two days happening this coming weekend on Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And as I mentioned earlier, this training is typically valued at $895, but because you're in my audience and you're watching this video, you could try it for free. In fact, if you go to the pin comment below, you could get registered for it right now. And just to give you some sense of what you're gonna be learning, here it is. More than 20 AI tools to build an AI toolkit, prompt engineering, data analysis without knowing how to code, using AI in Excel and creating professional presentations effortlessly, building tools with AI without writing code, creating stunning images and videos using AI tools, developing AI agents, and doing things like learning how to automate your work or your employees' work. And that's just the beginning. Because professionals from tech and non-tech sectors like sales, marketing, HR, operations, and even business owners and freelancers have all joined this before in the past and they've benefited from it. In fact, more than 4 million people from more than 40 different countries have participated in a program like this before and you're going to get left behind if you're not also doing this, especially when it's free. So what are you waiting for? Go to the pinned comment below, get registered for today. You're not gonna wanna miss it and I'm gonna be tuning in too. Also, make sure you join their WhatsApp community to receive all updates. Also, the introduction call and the first session for day two training happens on Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern, so please don't miss that. So here's how you actually control your memory. What you're gonna have to do is come up to the right-hand corner right here. You are going to click on settings, and then if you come into personalization, you will now be able to see a few different things. First and foremost, you're gonna be able to see reference chat history. 
So let ChatGPT reference all your previous conversations when responding. If you want ChatGPT to have full memory, I would strongly suggest that you turn this on. Or you could have it reference different saved memories. Now, if we click on manage memories right here, you will be able to see all of the different memories that this has over here. But the issue with this is that sometimes it remembers things that you don't want it to. So what you need to make sure that you do is come over in here and delete whenever there is going to be something in here. For example, is going to have a townhome in South Park, Charlotte. I looked at buying a townhome in South Park, Charlotte, but I don't want to live in Charlotte. So I'm going to remove this right here because I don't want it to take that type of context into the future. So you want to make sure that if you're just having it reference save memories, you go through and actually manage these things. But personally, I love having reference chat history on because it honestly makes ChatGPT so much better because then it can reference all of the different chats that you've had before in the past. Now, this brings me to feature number four. Let's say that you have something you don't want ChatGPT to reference in the future. It's really easy for you to be able to actually do this. If you just come over here, this button right here, you are going to see turn on temporary chat. This is very similar to opening up an incognito one. If you don't know what an incognito window is, it's when you open up a window that doesn't get saved in your browser history. You know why you would probably do this. But nevertheless, temporary chat. So this actually won't appear in history. It won't be used or update ChatGPT's memory, and it won't be used to actually train their models. Now they're probably going to keep a copy of this chat for up to 30 days for different crazy reasons and crazy things that you might be searching for. So don't go ahead and do this. But if you don't want ChatGPT to memorize something that you're saying, just turn on a temporary chat and it'll make sure that it does. Now, in addition to a temporary chat up here, there are two other things I wanted to cover for feature number four, because these are all smaller features. The other thing is right here, you can come over here and you can actually search through chats. For example, I am going to put in here IRA, and then this is going to show me all the different chats where I said IRA within the chat. Now, in addition to that, if we click on library right here, this is going to show me all of the different images that I have made or I have edited when it comes to ChatGPT, and I will be able to reference them, I will be able to share them, and I will be able to access all of them very easily right here. These things come in handy when you're trying to search for something that you referenced before in the past, that you made before in the past, or just after you've been using ChatGPT for a long period of time and it now has a bunch of different information because if we come over here, we could see that just today I've used ChatGPT a ton of different times. Now, I think that after showing you how to find your library of images right here, this is a great time for me to actually show you how you can create images and how you can create videos with ChatGPT. The easiest way to be able to create an image is just to start up a new chat, come over here into tools, click create an image, and then tell it exactly what you want, and it will go ahead and actually create that image. But there is one other way to do this. If you come over to this left-hand side right here and click on Sora, this is going to allow you to create videos and it's going to allow you to create images. And it's basically going to pull up this new tool inside of ChatGPT that makes it incredibly easy to do things. As you can see over here, we can make an image, we can make a video, and we could change a bunch of different things about it. We could change the aspect ratio. We could change what resolution it's going to be in. One thing you will note is the higher the resolution, the slower it's actually going to be with creating the content. You can make content that's 5, 10, 15, or 20 seconds long. You could come over here and choose how many different variations of things it's going to make. You could click on these different presets that you might have over here. And then if you click on this right here, this will actually tell you exactly what you're doing. And you can create a storyboard by clicking over here and actually begin to string things together if you wanted to make more of a story or something along the lines of that. In addition to that, you could come under images, be able to see all a bunch of images that were created. You could come under videos and see a bunch of videos that were created. You could come under top and see the top things that are created. You could explore through this and you could heart things and then it's going to show up within your liked posts over here. And again, you have my media, favorites, uploads, trash. You can create new folders in here. And if you want to create anything that is an image or a video, I'd strongly suggest that you come in here and be very descriptive. In addition to that, if we come back under explore right here, let's say that we see this cat video right here that actually looks exactly like one of my cats. We could come over here and we could turn it into a video. We could remix it or we could edit the prompt. Now, clearly this was made by somebody who actually wrote out something Spanish. But if we come into something else like this one, this is also a different language. 
let's see, we're going to come down to this one and also a different language. So as we can see, there are literally people all around the world that are actually using this. Now, if we click on this one right here, we're going to see that this is in English. We could see the exact prompt that they used. We could remix it. We could edit the prompt or we can create a video out of this. Now, the next feature that I want to show up here is actually something that's brand new. It's called Codex. So if we come over here, we open up Codex again. This is going to be similar to Sora where this is going to open up a new chat GPT tool. And now we can see that this is a research preview. And essentially what this is, is a, an agent that is going to allow you to code better. If we click on get started right here, you'll be able to see that you could do several things with this. This is a software engineering agent that can draft GitHub PRs in parallel with you. So give it a first pass for every bug fix, doc update, or a small feature. You could have it navigate your code base to find bugs, review code, suggest improvements. You could have it run lint and tests. So set up dependencies to enable execution. Then also this is powered by a new coding model and you could fine tune that in order to work with large code bases. And you can connect this to your GitHub right here. The other thing that they also have in here is this operator right here. Now operator is pretty crazy. I kind of alluded to this in the beginning, but essentially what operator is, is it is a browser agent. What is this allowed to happen? You could tell this to do things and it'll go off and actually do them. For example, buy four tickets to the Kendrick Lamar concert, or if you wanted to come over to shopping, buy an authentic Gucci sunglasses at a discounted price or come into travel. You could have it find a beachfront vacation rental, Barcelona with at least three bedrooms. There are a ton of different things that you could have this do around news, travel, shopping, local services, delivery, dining, and events. And if you haven't checked this out before, I would strongly suggest that you check this out because it is pretty crazy all of the different things that you are able to do with this. Now, I will tell you, this isn't perfect. This does mess some things up. It doesn't always work as planned. They're working on continually updating this. And I think that this is going to be a browser of the future, but right now it's not hundred percent there. So please, if you use this, don't get mad at me if you say, Hey, I didn't have a good experience with it, but I want to actually show this off to you. So we're going to click on this right here. Suggest a 30 minute meal with chicken that has at least 4.5 stars and you can see exactly what this actually looks like when this goes through and begins doing things as we could see up here we could see that this is actually going through doing this and we could actually watch this do something within the browser if we wanted to we could go through and we could take control here we can continue to message it or we just watch as this actually goes through and acts as a browser agent that interacts with the browser in order to find a 30 minute chicken recipe. And the one thing that I love about this is we could have multiple things happening at once. And while this is doing this, we could be over here coding. And this is over here actually doing our thing for dinner, finding our trip or ordering us dinner or concert tickets or whatever. This is where this is actually going to get powerful because right now I have five different tabs open, but only one of the tabs is actually doing something. And if I wanted to do something in one of the other tabs, I have to open it and I have to start doing something over here. But how much different is life going to look when you have five tabs open and there's actually things getting done? on each of them. Now this brings me to the last three features that you need to be aware of. And I want to go through these in rapid fire. The first one is that now if you go to do deep research on ChatGPT, you could see that you can now add in different sources. How did I do this? Just click on connect more right here. And you could see you can connect a bunch of different things. You could connect your Gmail your box, your Dropbox, GitHub, HubSpot, Google Drive, and all the other different tools here. And if you wanted to create your own custom connection here, just click on create. You can name it, put a description, put the MCP server URL and how it's going to be authenticated. And then you just have to actually agree to trust in this application. And this will go ahead and connect whatever you put on the other side of this to chat GPT. Now, this can only be used for deep research right now, but this is a really cool addition to ChatGPT. The next thing that you need to be aware of are going to be GPTs right here. If you want to do anything within ChatGPT, this allows you to actually do that. For example, let's say that we wanted to create a photo. We can open up the Canva GPT and guess what? We can now prompt ChatGPT. It will then give that prompt to Canva, it will create something and then it will show us it on ChatGPT or give us a link over to Canva for our exact creation. And they have these for a bunch of different things, for lifestyle, for education, research and analysis, productivity, writing. In fact, I can't believe that more people don't use GPTs because these are incredibly helpful. And if you wanted to, you could actually make your own. You could come over here and configure it. 
You can name it, put a description, put instructions, put different conversation starters, upload files. You could have it do all of these different things or create different actions right here that people will actually be able to take under here. And then guess what? You will be able to share this publicly, have it privately. And basically you could train your own model of ChatGPT that will be custom for whatever you want it to be able to do. And then that last hidden feature that you need to make sure you're taking advantage of are projects. I cannot emphasize how important these are. If we come over to YouTube scripts right here, you will see that I have given this instructions right here. I have also trained this on how I like my YouTube scripts to look. In fact, I gave it three different scripts. And now guess what I could do? I could literally just come over here and I could give this a title for my videos or give it a request, like give me three good hooks for this video. And then it went through and actually gave me hooks in my own style and format. Or if we come over here, we could see that I typed in here, title, how to get more views on a small YouTube channel, real algorithm hacks, and it spit out the script for one of my other YouTube channels. And you could train ChatGPT to be able to do the same exact thing for you, and it doesn't just have to be for YouTube scripts. Now, if you like this video, I'd strongly suggest check out this video here that walks you through a brand new free AI agent that can complete a ton of different tasks for you. I'll see you over there.